Welcome to Bois, Bois. A King of the Hill podcast. I am Mike. And I'm Rusty. Rusty, it is That Ain't Right Friday. Yes, sir. So it is f- That Ain't Right Friday. We we got an email. We did. We got an email from a fan, we which we appreciate uh, all y'all's emails and stuff. Yep. So if you've never sent one, go ahead and uh, go ahead and send one in. So, Info at roguemedianetwork.com, or you could send one into Bois, K-O-T-H, at gmail.com. There you go. So this one came uh, from Martin Man 3B. Okay. Uh, now, I'm going to screw this up because his name is on here, but it's, uh, I, I don't know, maybe you know what this is. P-H-E-U-N-I-T-H? Let me say that real quick. Funeth? Uh, not even going to try. So I'm going to say. Funeth? I've been, on, I've been on Phoenix, this earth long Phoenix. enough that I don't care, so I'm going to say yeah. Dude Funeth. that sent his email. Let's I'm just say, yeah, dude who sent email. Well, it's Funeth, <laughs> Funeth <laughs> Psychic Water Type. Okay. Okay? So he sent an email, and I, I think from from my interaction with them um, was, I think he thought this was going to be, like, scathing. You know, like, when he oh, sent okay. it to us, I think he thought, oh, well, they're not going to like this. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So let me read the email real quick, and I'll, I'll tell you what, what the rest of it is. I don't trust a, a King of the Hill revival, and I hope it doesn't happen because they're going to demonize it. Don't tell me for a second that a revival of a beloved established IP now owned by Disney, red flag, about a white southern nuclear family, triple red flag, right-leaning, red flag, with traditional values, red flag, set in Texas, red flag, with a possibility of releasing during a certain voting event, uh, event uh, and then in, in brackets, the whole circus, isn't going to be demonized on top of looking ugly with flash animation. My most positive outlook on this is that it just becomes another good family, G-O-O-D-E family, but despair, uh, desperately parroting current pop culture to sound relevant. So pretty much his biggest concern is is that they're going to take it and they're not going to do it justice due to the fact of who owns the IP. But if you do research to find out who owns everything and who owns what, does Disney own the IP of King of the Hill just because Fox, it was produced with Fox? I don't think that's how it works. I don't know if that's how it works or not. I don't think that's how it works. Um, Because if it worked that way, then why wouldn't it be on Fox? Why would Fox come out with a statement saying, hey, King of the Hill is not happening on our network? So I feel like if they were going to say, hey, it's not happening on our network, and from everything that I've read, it's because Fox doesn't own King of the Hill. They only want things that are produced in-house that they own. So the so. reason the reason they're saying this is that Hulu is owned by Disney. Yeah, Hulu is owned by Disney. So I think that they're saying that that is a Disney thing. But, How, however, but, 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 look at Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, was it owned by Comedy Central? No, it wasn't. Right. It was owned by Mike Paramount. Judge. And he I put think it's who it was owned by, owned and, by, yeah. And that's the thing is, I think... Mike Judge probably, probably, I'm just going to say, he probably owns all of this stuff. At yeah. this point in his career, at this point in the existence of King of the Hill and all that, he's probably contractually changed everything from when he first started. So, Because Fox wouldn't announce, hey, the show's not going to be on our network 
if it wasn't still some way attached to the Fox network. It's not. Sure. It's completely yeah. just like Beavis and Butthead is no longer solely attached to, well, actually, they do air on Comedy Central. Right. But, but either way, I don't think they own those properties. I don't think no. the IP is like theirs. No, I know that they don't own it. Um, so I'm okay. not really sure how all that, I, that works. I get being worried about it, but I do still hope it happens. I, I understand not wanting it to be sullied yeah. by current politics and things like that, but you got to have faith in Mike Judge, I believe. That's what ultimately. my faith is left in. Yeah. My faith is left in Mike Judge because I've watched the new Beavis and Butthead, re- mm-hmm. Butthead re- the return, and it's just as funny. The jokes are updated, but it's still just the same Beavis and Butthead. It's the same nonsensical crap, you know, sure. that everybody loves. And I, I understand his concern. That's a lot of people's concern is that they're going to bring it back. It's going to be watered down. It's going to be, you know, uh, politically correct for uh, the time frame. But people still forget South Park's being produced. South Park still, they say whatever the hell they want. You know, yeah. Nobody's like the, the most uncancelable show. They say whatever and do whatever they want. And they, they own Comedy Central, you sure, know, sure. like without them, Comedy Central probably, you know, it would just be ridiculousness all day long. So yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Yeah. But uh, also he says, or they say uh, right leaning. Mm. I think we've talked about this before. Yeah, I don't I think they're right leaning. And then you I mean, I think that's the assumption. The assumption is right leaning. Yeah. And then traditional values too. I don't really sure. I don't really think that they embody the traditional value. They 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 try to and they want to, but they never fully meet it because yeah. who in the hell Okay, son, like the whole thing about the cigarettes. All right, son, you, I caught you smoking a cigarette. Now you got to smoke a carton. That That's counterproductive parenting. That's not tradi- That's not a traditional value, pumping cigarettes, pumping your kid full of cigarettes. You know, I, I just don't see... I just don't see the traditional part. They're very non-traditional family. If you really look at everything, they have a, a niece that lives with them because of her yeah, estranged yeah, family. Yeah, right. You have a son who isn't the traditional baseball, football yeah, son yeah. that you, you know, the, yeah, he's very much a duck out of water kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. And then Hank, uh, sells propane, but then on the weekends, you know, they st- he steals his best friend's mower, sure. uh, causes a a, a, a a police incident from stealing yeah. his friend's mower. Yeah. Uh, they stole Boomhauer's car at one point, dumped it in a quarry. So, I mean, people say traditional values. Yeah, the show kind of touches on the traditional values to a sense, but do they embody them? I don't think so. So, I don't, re- the traditional value, the, the right leaning. I- I really don't. Those Again, I think it's an assumption. You know, yeah. I think it's all based on an assumption. It's based on the fact that they're Texan characters. I think a lot right. of people assume that just because he's a Texas well, guy, that they, he's, yeah. yeah, they say set in Texas being a red flag. And I, I don't think that is necessarily. I think Texas is a lot more purple than it used to be. Um, and I, I understand. I mean, politics suck. That's mm-hmm. just the way it is right now. They they suck pretty hard. Yeah. Uh, and I don't well, care what side you're on. It sucks. Well, the whole the whole country would be blue if it not for gerrymandering. I, sure. I, I, th- I feel like a, a, a vast majority of states that go red are only red because of gerrymandering. Texas being one of those states. I personally think the the majority of the country is purple. Um, because I don't yeah. believe in red or blue. Yeah, I, I, think, I don't think so either. I think there are many, many shades of gray in this world, and Absolutely. I think that's how normal people live. Yeah, people um, that are the extremists, you know, they die hard for whatever side, but yeah. us middle-of-the-fence guys, I feel like it. none of it, you know, like – this guy argues with this guy, this guy argues with this guy, and it's sure. off or not. Nobody's fixing anything. Nothing's changing. Yeah. Things are just getting worse. So what's the what's the point? It says, with the possibility of releasing during a certain voting event, we don't know a date yet. You know, that would be crazy if they waited <laughs> it for... It would be great like November th- th- of next year. Th- th- it would be insane <laughs> if they just waited for the election year. Uh, and that, like... Uh, to start off the show, starting off in a new election cycle would sure. be... I don't know. I think I think there'll be opportunity there for the writers for sure. If nothing else, the writers are going to get a lot of opportunity. But that's a lot of thing that people don't understand either is that it's not it's not like Mike Judge is the only person that's attached to this show and the voice right. actors, the right. only people that are attached to this show that were with the show from the beginning. Sure. They're bringing back as many people as they can to do this. So you've still got Wes Archer doing the direction, you know, so there's so many just like people that are still involved in this show to it not be the same show. Of course, it's not going to be the same show, but right. it'll still be this. It'll still be the same show. It's created by the yeah. same yeah. people. 
the same guy that did the entire all the design for everything. He's still involved in it, you know. So it's so I feel like artistically it's going to be similar. Of course, the content is going to be different, but as far as like the the art and the the art direction and yeah. the writers and all that, it's I think it's yeah. going to be sound. I uh, um, I was watching uh, Bob Odenkirk's new show. Um, yeah, Bob Odenkirk. Yeah, yeah. Like Lucky him. Hank. Yeah, Lucky Hank. And I didn't realize that um, Toby uh, f- uh, from The Office. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, what's his name? Um, anyway, he was a big big part of this show, King of the Hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he was one of the writers. Toby on Huss. It. No, not Toby Huss. The, no, I'm, not Toby Huss. Yeah, I'm. Um, I just said Toby. Shit, his name's not Toby. His name. No, his name's not Toby. That's the only though, per- yeah, that's the only way writer. I can call him that. He yeah. was one of the huge writers on The Office. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Paul Lieberstein. Paul Lieberstein. Yeah. yeah Paul yeah. Lieberstein is uh, one of the co-creators or or whatever or the writers of Lucky oh, Hank. That's great. Which is is so cool because uh, Oscar's also in it. The guy from The Office. Yeah. He's yeah. In yeah. It. Yeah. Um, it's got a lot of Office and King of the Hill ties. Yeah. And then, like I told you, I, I've been rewatching Parks and Rec, and I, I got to oh, Jonathan. Awesome. Uh, what's his What's the guy's name that does John Redcorn? Oh, Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Joss. Joss. Yeah, I, I came across yeah, he's him. In there, yeah, he's it's in just there. crazy. Like since we started doing this, how much I noticed those folks. You know, being oh, involved in other projects. Oh, different people being involved in other yeah, projects. Yeah. Well, uh, and how many of them still work together a lot of the time? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we also watched that uh, Brittany Murphy documentary. And um, did it discuss, did it have a lot of King of the Hill? No, but well, I'm surprised it didn't talk Kathy, more Kathy about King Najimi of the Hill. Kathy was like she was like one of the main people in this thing because talking about she her. was. She, they were for, I'm sure they were friends. They were on the show together. They were friends, yeah. and she talks about Britney's steady decline and how fast it happened with this dude. And um, uh, it was a mental health thing. She was right. Well, no, he was. I think he was poisoning her. Honestly, yeah. Uh, but they also found a bunch of black mold in the house and all kinds of mm. stuff. I mean, there's all kinds lots of, of factors, things. lots of factors. Yeah, and and Kathy and you know, Jimmy, she gets super choked up. Like she was like, "Why didn't I just go get her?" You know, I knew something was going on. Yeah. I should have just gone and taken her from her. You know, from that guy and all this. Stuff. And then he dies like within the next six months. Yeah, he did. So yeah, he did. it's it's a crazy. It made it seem like a conspiracy oh, kind of thing. I don't think it was a conspiracy. I think it was yeah. people just treating themselves like garbage. Yeah, that too. Um, yeah, he was he he was definitely a garbage person. Uh, the next point was um, it will all be flash animation. Um, I don't flash animation doesn't exist anymore. Flash, flash died at the beginning of this year, well, wasn't it, or last it year? Was, it was last year. it was renamed Adobe Flash Professional. Well, it was it was once known as Adobe Flash Professional, then Macromedia Flash. That's when I took it, mm-hmm. um, and now it's Adobe Animate. Yeah, Adobe. Animate. Um, and I don't think Professional Studios are using Adobe Animate, uh, but I, I, I understand what, what he's referring to. I'll ask though, F what they use. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm I, not sure. I understand what they're referring to, which is uh, basically uh, that that quick animation you see it on a lot of shows these days and it looks super computer animated like yeah. they did it real fast real cheap i don't think this is going to be that way I, beavis and butthead didn't strike me that way it actually nah. i think it looks a little better than it used to i think it looks better too well a lot yeah. of people don't understand about animation is is that uh the only thing that's changed is the medium yeah the, the paper the the computer whatever it's that's yeah. the only thing that changed these guys still have to have a functional sure. knowledge of art they sure. still have to be able to draw yeah. very well to be able to do their job cuz uh, i watched a, a youtube video on where they were discussing the transition from paper to art yeah. or paper to uh, computer. to computer yeah. sorry and uh, that's pretty much what they said. It's, there was the only thing that was different is that my pen is now attached to the tablet yeah, instead sure. of the pen sure. just being a free paper yeah. pen. You know, so well, I mean, the computer will fill in cells and things like that, which which I think is just a faster way of doing it. it makes it easier for them too. Yeah. So so they're able to still create. So I'm not a good product. Yeah, I'm not super worried about that part. I'm not either. Uh, I'm not worried about the art part at all because all of the people that are attached to yeah. it are the same people that yeah, did all yeah, the yeah, artwork yeah. for the sure. first one. So and then the last point, the professionals that have been doing it for 30 plus right. years at this point in their careers they right. started with king of the hill 30 you know 20 plus yeah. years later yeah, they're, they're, they're still in the business so so uh, the trust la- it the last part of this is says uh the most positive outlook and that it becomes another good family but desperately parroting current pop culture to sound relevant um i have enough faith in the writers that that won't happen uh well now, that's the thing as though, far but, as but a good is, family goes yeah that could have been a good show 
Um, yeah. It was not given enough time. Um, there wasn't enough. Uh, I don't think there's enough push behind it. Either. Sure, sure. Um, the humor's not terrible. It's not. It's not. Um, bad. I mean, it's not. I don't think of it as King of the Hill quality, but um, I, I think it could have found its rhythm. Yeah. You know, there's a guy. Um, I mean, it's hard to pitch a show and create a show and get a show to be on the air for even one yeah, season. Sure. So it had something. Somebody saw some redeeming quality in it. Otherwise, it would have never made it as far as it made it. There's a guy out there named Justin Spitzer who uh, he worked on The Office and then he created um, The Good Place. Mm-hmm. He created Superstore. Okay. Uh, he now has a show called American Auto. And um, I, I, I will kill somebody to watch a good sitcom like a good one right because yeah, they just don't exist hardly yeah, anymore no, they're just, now I, I still watch andy griffith just to get good sitcoms <laughs> yeah, sure, again sure yeah um that's what it, we need to do make sitcoms great again okay. we, that, that's what we need that's a technicolor hat <laughs> there you go yeah um it, it, so uh, this guy's okay so here's the way i i see justin spitzer stuff and i will watch anything he does but he is in it for the long haul Mm-hmm. Right. He's telling a story, a complete story. And to tell that story, you need to build characters. Yeah, for sure. And it it took a whole season in Superstore to build those characters. Once you build those characters, you as the audience start expecting certain things from these characters. Absolutely. And so you know about them. Right. Dwight on the office wouldn't have been Dwight on the office had you not built that character. No, you know, just, just been, being yeah, a total nerd. Been, yeah, it would have been weird. Yeah. 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 And so um, Justin Spitzer is really good at that. American Auto, when it first came, well, Superstore, when it first came on, I was like, yeah, it's OK. It's, well, it's all right. And then as it went, you you get invested in it because of the characters. Mm-hmm. It's the character building that comes first. And I think that's so important in shows. Look at King of the Hills is no no exception to that. Yeah, it did really good. You had really to build good. the characters. It did really good in the first season to build the characters, yes. too. It did an yes. excellent job. As far as shows go for character building, yeah. especially adult animation, because yeah. they don't really do a lot of building and they right. don't do a lot of development outside of just the stereotypical stuff that that sure. character is. And they usually just run with those tropes the whole season runs but yeah. these characters in king of the hill they they develop they change they think they feel yeah. uh they yeah. change their but, change how they act but if you didn't know what you know about the characters it wouldn't be you as would funny. never know it, would it never wouldn't be as funny, funny. It would never you know be as to funny. see dale just go Geek! and jump over a fence it wouldn't make any sense right without the build-up of him being yeah. who he is or his and so or the global warming joke in the right. very first se- the first episode of the, the first season it wouldn't have been f- it, it wouldn't have been the same uh if if you would have did that same yeah. joke three seasons in and you never explained that he was a conspiracy theorist, you know what I mean? So it just wouldn't be the same. My response to this email was, "We know what you mean. We're going to talk about it this Friday." So that's what we are. We're, that's what we're doing. It. And I got a response from them that says, "Really? Uh, I thought this would be a scathing response because I so rarely see people considering the negative possibilities despite modern reboots failing eight times out of ten. Yeah, well, it's our Very specific it's our eight duty. Times out of 10, it's our way. duty to explore that kind of stuff yeah. uh, as as people who are podcasting about King of the Hill. And and you know, I, I've heard a lot of negative. So he's he says you know he said his piece of negativity on it. Sure. The internet is fifty fifty. So the the atmosphere and the the temperature on Twitter is fifty. It's 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 cool to the idea for sure. So I personally, my view on all of it is is we got to give it a chance. You got to wait. You got to give it time. If it does take an episode or two or even the first season back to to capture everybody again, you just got to give it time. I don't. I really don't think it's going to take. I feel like the first season, first season, first episode out the gate is just going to be. I don't know. You know, it's going to be awesome, I believe. Yeah, I'm going to give it every chance I can. Um, and let me address the expecting us to have a scathing response. Uh, I'm never going to do that to anybody who takes the time and the effort to write us. Um, give us your points. We'll discuss them, especially on a Friday like this. This yeah. is what I this mean, is You might for. not like what we have to say yeah, about, yeah. about it. But, but it's okay it's if you not, don't like yeah, it. It's okay like if it. we don't like what you said or whatever. We it's can all still discussion. get along. Yeah. We're all still fans. Yeah, we're just trying to have right? a discussion. So, yeah, so... I, I can't agree with him. No, I can't agree with him. I don't, I don't. And then the thing I didn't understand what he said was uh, desperate, desperate about pop culture references or something like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. Well, every, that's what the whole point yeah, of these shows is to 
discuss pop culture in a creative way. We have kind if of. If you go back and you like, we we're going yeah. back now, watching through all King of the Hill. There's specific stuff that happens in each one that we have to go look up. And when we look it up, we're like, like, uh, like the actress that was found, the the one woman that played Lois Lane, how she was found in a bush. Yeah. You know those kind of things. You'll never know any of those things. And, and, and I don't know any of those things because I wasn't alive. I mean, I was alive, but I was too young to know what was going yeah, on. So sure. if you go back and you look, all right, so this episode came out in 1999. Mm-hmm. You go look at some of the references. Well, that's 1999. Yeah, so in yeah. 2023, what can you expect? Because the writers write topically. They write about things that are in their world and they inject it into the into yeah. the, into the show kind Absolutely. of thing. So I feel like well, you see the that's same kind of thing. a weird observation. You see that a lot in the old King of the Hill. I mean, there's a lot of references to who was president at the time. There's a lot of references to, yeah. I mean, freaking ZZ Top shows up. Yeah, I mean, ZZ come Top. on. And Randy they re- Travis. They refer to a lot of uh, Bob Dylan, Willie yeah. Nelson. They refer yeah. to a lot of- There's uh, a lot of pop culture references. Pop culture references in that, that era. Like, uh, what does he say? Uh, golly, golly, Bula, or whatever the guy, the, you know what I'm talking about? Golly, <laughs> golly. Golly, Bula? No, what was it? It was somebody's name, had a weird name, like no. uh, Golly, Golly, Boudreau or okay. something like that. All right. You don't remember that? No, Dale remember said that. it. Yeah. it was Dale that said it, but it was, we, you go look it up, and it's an actual human oh, being. Oh, Boutros, Boutros, Golly. Yeah, Boutros, yeah, 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 Boutros, Golly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah so okay. just stuff like that. <laughs> golly, golly, but for Boutros. 2023, that's what sure. they're going to do. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly, the whole, exactly. Why would you? It's well, just think like about it. They've got guy 20 too. years to pull from. Family Guy is literally a show. That's that, all Family Guy that's is. That's all it is. That's it's cut scenes of pop culture references. So, I mean. There's a way to do it, and I just I just have a lot more faith in the people that are doing it. It's why I used to think Seth MacFarlane was gay was the amount of show tunes that he has in his show. <laughs> like for a straight man to know as much yeah. show tunes as he does, he must sure. have really loved that era. He loves, of, he loves musicals. Yeah. Uh, that era too. Uh, that, that, don't, uh, don't tell anybody, but I, I love show tunes also. I like show tunes too. <laughs> I, I, I try to make a joke or make a funny about it, but there's, yeah, there's, it. there's sure. some that I really, really like. Music uh, Man music, is one of my musicals. favorites. M- music uh, Man is one of my favorites. My favorite musical is just going to have to be Grease. That's, that's my favorite favorite it was just uh i had two sisters and they both loved it my older sister loved it yeah so i got stuck watching as a child with her i just can't deal with that ending I don't really like the ending either. Flying into the sky. I just yeah, don't get it. It's all everybody's a dream. dead, I think. It's all a dream. I think everybody's dead. Yeah, I think she I think they die on the beach. <laughs> like her like her right. and John Travolta yeah. die right there on the beach. And this is their like <laughs> death dream. This is our but, uh, welcome to our new show, alternate endings to alternate famous movies. Endings. Yeah. But so I, I got I, I was forced to watch it with my older sister. Yeah. And then I was the big brother to my little sister. So sure. as a good big brother, I got forced again into yeah. watching it for another generation. So I had to I had to watch that a, a lot. Well, as so far as the music band goes. Uh, it starts with T, rhymes with P. That stands for pool. And that means trouble. Trouble yeah. right here in River City. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, I I just want to thank again a fan for interacting yeah, we with appreciate us. Appreciate that a lot. Uh, thank you, Punith Psychic Water Type. I hope yeah. I'm saying that correct. If I'm not, send me it. another email and tell me how to say it. Spin, uh, put it out phonetically. I'm an old man who can't read. So and and also everybody that uh, that won the contest, we still yep. have your shirts. Still and coming. I promise. Everything is still yep. coming. Uh, just some delays. Don't worry. Everything's coming to everybody. We also, St- stickers, all that yeah, still going out. We also have some surprises coming for you guys. I think we're we're going to kick this thing up a notch in the next couple of months. Um, and then I want to take a little bit of time here for you to tell us about the new show that you're developing. Uh, so currently in development is, uh, well, we went looking for names and... Uh, uh, John Fountain, who is the guy that I'm yep. going to be co-hosting yep. the show with. He, he was a guest here last Friday. Yeah, he was our guest yep. last Friday. The storyboard artist, yep. most mostly known for Fairly Odd Parents, but he's right. worked on tons of different stuff. Tons Chalk stuff. Zone, yeah. uh, My Life as a Teenage Robot. Yeah. Those are the three yeah. that he mentions Big most ones. often yeah, when, sure. when I talk to him. So uh, we're developing a show. So we had looked for a name. We kind of spitballed some names with each other. Mm-hmm. Well... We came up with, he came up with the name Animation Conversation. I love that. So I go and look it up though. So the only thing is there is a podcast that already had that name. Yeah. But it's dead. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm stealing your name. There's nothing new under the sun. And, man. and, that's just and the way in it their goes. Twitter bio, they said, we're going to try to produce this podcast. Yeah. Well, we're not going to try, yeah. guys. No, you're going to do it. We are the animation yeah. conversation and not even yeah. D. It's just animation conversation without yeah. the D, no D, D on there. So animation conversation, be on the lookout for that. Uh, uh, it's just going to be about animation. It's going to be uh, the history of animation. It's going to be discussions with, uh, hopefully, with some some good animators, that some cartoonists. Cool. Yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, and 
having somebody that's in the industry, it's going to, I feel like it's going to help us immensely with that podcast, him, him being an industry, uh, being in the industry for over 30 years. So just be able to look out for that. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I'm still kind of in awe that yeah. I'm going to be yeah. hosting a podcast. Well, you're you're with, in awe that he drew you. I yeah, mean, that's, that's, too. that's <laughs> that was a big deal. Well, yeah, that's yeah. a big deal. That's sure. what I told him too. I get it. One of the things that he wants to do for our show is he wants to take two minutes from every episode yeah. and have his apprentice animate it. That's awesome. So it'll be me and him animated and uh, yeah. I told him he needs to pitch it. I said, you need to get that and go pitch that to somebody. And well, Let's uh, make a few and then we'll pitch it. But yeah. but he, yeah. he said, he said, slow down. Slow yeah, down. That's, that's right. What that's said. what I'm he saying. That, yeah. well, yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. He, he said, that, you know, being the guy in the industry, he was like, yeah, yeah that, that's not going to happen. But, but yeah. you know, yeah. I, I'm... I work hard. I'm You're pretty optimistic. Hopeful. I get it. I work yeah. hard and I'm hopeful that so, something's going to happen if nothing else. Be on the lookout for animation conversation. Yeah, be on the lookout and, for it. And uh, be on the lookout for us again on Monday. We'll be back. I'm not going to say the first guest's name for animation conversation, but okay. I will tell you that he worked on Powerpuff Girls. He's worked on Dexter's Lab. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. He actually is uh, uh, the one of the creators of Oh Yeah, car- the Oh Yeah cartoon. Oh, wow, yeah. So Chalk mm-hmm. Zone, the anthology stuff. Uh, yeah. The the My Life as a Teenage Robot. Yeah. where Fairly Odd Parents spun off out of. So that's really yeah, great. So. Be able to yeah. look out for that, guys. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, and I, I will too. not be a part of that. I will just be helping you produce it. Yeah. And so um, I, I think that's going to be fun. Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, guys, if you want any more from us, check out roguemedianetwork.com. Tons of shows there, tons of new stuff coming out. Uh, we would love for you to be a part of anything else we've got going on. You want to tell them where they can find us real quick? Yeah, you can find us on Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash B W A A. A K O T H. That's linktree.com. Whatever you want. Not linktree.com. That's linktree. Bois K O T H. Link.tree. Link.tree. Yep. However you say it. Yeah. All right, guys. And we will see you again on Monday. Uh, once again, thank you all for listening. Write us emails. Send us. Yeah, uh, talk to us. Dumb greeting cards. Whatever you want uh, to do. I know I've been slacking on social media, DMs. but just talk to us. Please. We're there. Please talk to us. You'll end up on the show. I promise. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. Y'all take it easy. We'll see you next time. We will Tanya. We This has been a Rogue Media Network production.